Hello, my name is Alpha, and Spooktober is upon us, the unholy month. Without a doubt my favorite time of the year. The weather gets chilly without being too cold, and the darkness falls upon us, slowly. So instead of going out to hang with your non-existent friends, why not stay inside, turn off the lights, and boot up some video games? If you don't know which ones, or have trouble choosing, I have a total of 14 games lined up in the spirit of Halloween. Both scary games, but also less scary that still fits into the template of spooky and or Halloween games. To fully enjoy this production, I recommend the following. Couch, Halloween themed candy, zombie soda, fog and Lawrence. This year I also have two special appearances on this list, so keep an eye out for them. Oh, and no Castlevania this year. Alright guys, but enough talk. Have at you! After Shinji Mikami, the director and creator of Resident Evil, felt finished with the aforementioned series not liking the direction the series were heading in. He started up a studio called Tango Gameworks and started working on a psychological horror game. The very same game that takes up the 10th spot on this list. The Evil Within. The Evil Within may on paper seem like nothing out of the ordinary survival horror game. A slow, methodical start leads into dreamlike sections and disturbing realities where the game shines the most. The survival gameplay is all fine, reminiscent in some ways to classic horror games, but with some new additions. While the strongest part of the game lies in these unreal, psychological horror focused sections. What makes this a spectacular fit for the month of Spooktober is the aforementioned dream sections and overall design. Feeling like Shinji took some inspiration from Silent Hill and mixed it with the tried and true formula that Resident Evil still uses today. It all blends together into a great game, in my book a must try at least. If you have time, I highly recommend to play it during a foggy Halloween night. That's when the game store and effed up scary sections are the most effective. If you've been around the block for some time, you've most likely come across a lot of classic horror games. Doom, which could be scary back in the day, Clock Tower, System Shock 2, Fear and Alone in the Dark. Unfortunately, the newly released titles leave much to be desired, so those are not the ones I'm referring to, but the original game released in 1992 for the MS-DOS, if anyone remembers that. You see, instead of being this shallow, can barely qualify for alpha demos, void of any quality, horror or satisfying gameplay, the first game was a true survival horror experience, considered to be the forefather for the whole genre. Game follows the mid-aged detective, Edward Carnby, or the younger Emily Hartwood, in their investigation of an abandoned, seemingly haunted mansion. The presentation and setting of the game is enough as is to be mentioned or included here, the game's methodical, slow-paced gameplay and the larger focus on preparation and ingenuity over reflexes and jump scares is something I truly appreciate in a horror-themed game. If you've already written out the game purely because of the aged look, because let's be real, Edward is horrifying himself, maybe more than the monsters, you're going to miss out on a fantastic experience. The heavy inspirations from both Edgar Allan Poe as well as H.P. Lovecraft can be noticed throughout the experience. And I hope you'll give Alone in the Dark a chance, because like its name implies, it's perfect for Halloween. During Spooktober, chances are the nights will be darker, foggier and more moist. <laughs> moist. This setting is great when playing hide and seek. There is suspense, stealth, running and hours upon hours of fun. 
Imagine combining something so simple as hide and seek with bloodthirsty, sometimes supernatural killers. That's what the Canadian studio Behavior Interactive did when they created Dead by Daylight. The game goes a little bit something like this. Drop four player controlled third person characters on a map and make them repair generators to escape their enclosure. Meanwhile, also drop a f***ing psychopath with crazy powers whose sole reason is to kill everyone they come across before they can manage to escape. These killers are also player controlled, but instead of being third person, they use a first person perspective, making it slightly easier for the so called survivors to hide and outmaneuver the killers. It's simple on paper, but so damn effective. <laughs> Along this, it's super clear where some of Dead by Daylight's inspiration was taken from, as they include legendary horror icons such as Leatherface, Freddy Krueger, Pyramid Head even Michael Myers himself, Mr. Halloween Man. You can even visit places or, oh, oh, excuse me, realms, like Gideon Meat Plant, Lampkin Lane, Badham Preschool and Silent Hill. It's like a horror dream come true and that's why I couldn't leave Dead by Daylight out of this list. During the 70s, the science fiction genre gained a real footholding within the cinema scene with movies such as Westworld, Solaris, Dark Star, Star Wars and Ridley Scott's prominent film Alien. 35 years later, after many mediocre or straight up failed attempts, Creative Assembly brought us the undoubtedly best iteration of an alien game to date, Alien Isolation. The game centers around Ellen Ripley's daughter, Amanda, who joins a retrieval team sent to recover a flight recorder from Ellen. The crew enters the space station Sevastopol to find out that it's been largely abandoned. Stuff lying around broken or left behind, no human life in sight, it's all very mysterious. As the dread sets in from being isolated, <laughs> you also begin to feel followed. This follower is in time revealed to be the deadly alien. Problem is, you can't defend yourself for most of the time. The game relies heavily on building atmosphere and tension, while the gameplay revolves heavily on hiding and being smart. Craft items or usables to help you out further, but keep in mind the AI can also be quite clever. So that's what makes this perfect. Abandoned space station, check. No means of defense, almost, check. Deadly, unpredictable enemy or enemies, check. Isolation, for double, check. These aspects are what alien isolation is built upon, and they're the very same reason why you should play this on Halloween. Let's go back to a better time, namely 2008. Diablo 3 had just been announced. It was still possible to go to cool as fuck events like E3, Quakecom or the game convention in Leipzig, Germany. Dynasty Warriors 6 rocked my world and I was so looking forward to Ninja Gaiden 2. It was a great year for gaming and for me personally. That is, until a game came along and gave me nightmares for years to come, combining most of my fears into a terrible, horrific mush. Dead Space. Dead Space plot centers on our main character, engineer Isaac Clarke, who travels on the Kellyon to find out what happened to his girlfriend, Nicole, after receiving a video recording of her, where she says she's sorry and that it's all falling apart over on the Ishimura. Not much else is revealed at first, and after accidentally <laughs> crashing into the station, the crew finds themselves in quite a predicament when they realize the error of their ways. 
It's quickly made painfully clear that most of the crew on board have been either slaughtered by the terrifying necromorphs or driven to suicide by slowly going insane. That now includes most of Isaac's crew as well. Similar to many other forms of media, being alone in outer space while trying to find a way out of there can be scary, but not being alone makes it even worse. There's a great video about it really, and I'll link it down below again. All of this is what makes Dead Space so horrifying, always being on edge and expecting the worst, not wanting to face anything around the next corner. This is a must play for Halloween. No, wait, hold up. I meant bloodstained, baby! Yeah, no use in pushing it any further. Bloodstained is the new era of Castlevania, in my opinion. Both with their 8 bit throwback games, Curse of the Moon 1 and 2, but also with their Ritual of the Night game. Both are terrific games, and you should try them both, honestly. Ritual of the Night follows the Shardbinder Miriam, a human forcibly fused with demonic crystals that attune them to power. After a 10 year long slumber, she goes out to seek the other remaining Shardbinder, Gibo, Gebo, however you pronounce his name, who has summoned a demonic castle and plans to destroy England and everyone therein. Ritual of the Night is true to the Metroidvania style of newer Castlevanias, while the Curse of the Moon games plays more like the early days of Castlevania, taking some inspiration from Curse of Darkness while improving upon the format. Teammates can be recruited, sub-weapons can be found for them all, and pumping NES-like tunes are always blasting through your ears. These are spin-offs and standalones when compared to the main game Ritual of the Night, and I honestly prefer these old school arcade games. Now, Castlevania have always gone hand in hand with Halloween for myself, a must play every year on this hallowed month. But I have to say, if Iga wants to continue with this polished, pure fun games with the Bloodstained series, I'm all aboard. This entry is a very special one, because this game I haven't played, yet. I usually don't do this, but I felt the need to do it anyway. What makes a great horror game, in my opinion, is a few key things. While it's good to have some form of idea on what's going on, it's most effective to have these slowly unfolding mysteries, oddity and mystery in one. Few clues and notes, or hints, or similar every now and then is a great way to start a critical thinking process in players, as well as keep their interests. Many great horror games use some form of isolation, entrapment, or abandonment to increase the suspense, panic, or fear. Outlast uses the asylum, a semi locked in huge building, with unknown dangers lurking everywhere while Alien Isolation uses the space stations to increase the feeling of no escape and entrapment. And within the box of what's reasonable, surprises or curveballs can do wonders to further change the player from confident to almost full-on panic in the blink of an eye. The dogs jumping through the window in Resident Evil 1 is among the most well-known jump scares slash surprises in horror to this day. Silent Hill 4, The Room, also does this, kind of, by making the former safe apartment feel not so safe. And speaking of Silent Hill, this entry could have well been another if only Konami didn't massively f up one of the possibly best horror experiences literally ever. Ah, <sighs> gets me so s mad. Instead, it goes to another game by the same moniker, Silent Hill. Silent Hill was developed by Team Silent in the mid 90s and released in 1999. It was a commercial success and is to many considered to be one of the best video games of all time, mainly because of the normal main character Harry Mason, 
as well as leaning towards a more psychological horror style with thick atmosphere. It's a very interesting title and I suggest a video called The Rise and Fall of Silent Hill made by Gamers, or Gamers probably. I'll link it down below in the description or in the comment section, you should really watch it. The follow up game Silent Hill 2 is also a fantastic game from what I've heard, one that I will try to play through sometime soon as well. Without Silent Hill, many modern horror games wouldn't even have been made. If you're in the spirit of playing through a more psychological focused horror game that's void of any jump scares really, try Silent Hill 1 and 2, those are the best ones to play. Horror media where the cast makes terrible decisions, split up when not necessary, dying unnecessarily and being seemingly useless never seem to end. It's annoying to just sit by and watch them make these decisions over and over again. With this next entry you can be the master of your own fate, controlling a similar group of people and being the deciding factor in whether anyone lives to face the next day or dies a gruesome death. A title by the name of Until Dawn. Strangely enough, there haven't been many horror games inspired by classic teen horror films, but it's extremely evident that the game takes inspiration and some cliches from movies such as Psycho, Halloween, The Exorcist and even The Conjuring, while taking the biggest inspiration from the game Heavy Rain. Even so, the game's main draw, aside from the setting and plot, is the so-called butterfly effect first coined in the early 1800s by Johann Gottlieb Fritzsche. He stated, you could not remove a single grain of sand from its place without thereby changing something throughout all parts of the immeasurable whole. And that's what this game is built upon. It heavily revolves around this mechanic. It also makes the game more replayable as small actions may impact many different things, even for other players. The studio also tried with last year's Man of Medan to create an experience for couch multiplayer called Movie Night, which I appreciated, but it it failed in my eyes. Bleh. The game wasn't that good and you didn't care if anyone died really, or at least that's how it was to me. Therefore, there are no better games to satisfy your teen horror screaming and dying itch with replayability to boot and to sit down with some mates, choose which character you all should control and just have a blast. Two entries left. This is a game I had put up for a long time before finally giving in and playing it. And I've regretted it ever since. Partly because I awake in cold sweat some nights because of this game, partly because it's such a great horror experience. Yes, experience. Although it's starting to show some age, it has aged like fine wine or cheese, splendidly. I am of course talking about Amnesia the Dark Descent. And from here on out I have another special guest. Oh I went a bit Spanish there for a second. My dear friend, Mr. Hateful, take it away. Hey, my name is Hotisk and I'm a huge horror fan, and of course Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of my favorite games of all time, Amnesia The Dark Descent. Amnesia is one of those instant classics, like The Witcher 3 and Dark Souls is iconic for the RPG genre. So too is Amnesia for the horror medium. It's a commercial success, and it helped launch a majority of YouTube careers. My god, it's Lord Jameson! The game uses many of the tools used when creating a memorable horror experience. The plot, for example, is straightforward but interesting. Our main character Daniel wakes up in the intimidating Brennenberg Castle, knowing nothing except he needs to traverse to the inner sanctum to reveal the answer to his questions. The game uses this fear of the unknown together with downtime between scripted events overflowing with atmosphere to make the players themselves create their own fear. Soon you start imagining sounds, seeing shades of monsters from the corner of your eye, while there are none there. It's one of the best Lovecraftian works ever made, and it's not enough to talk about. Amnesia The Dark Descent is a game that simply needs to be played to get the full effect of psychological Lovecraftian horror. 
perfect game for Halloween. Like all top lists, I have some honorable mentions to share with you. These games are mostly Halloween or horror themed, not scary per se, so before I unveil the best game to play during Halloween, here are some games that you should consider. Halloween for me is about atmosphere and that special autumn feeling, dark nights and brisk days. It's the perfect time to cozy up in the couch with some hot cocoa or Halloween candy, surrounded by the veil of night. Vampires, skeletons and zombies are what Halloween should be all about in my opinion. So that's also why the best game to play during Spooktober is the now legendary Resident Evil games. All of them, well, almost, have something unique to offer. Isolation, atmosphere and mystery. Stress, puzzles, claustrophobia. But if I could choose, I'd definitely decide between the remake of the second game or Resident Evil 7. The first has the huge mansion which just screams classic horror, along with some great scares. I really enjoyed Resident Evil 4, and while it has great moments where it shines, it's more action focused than I'd like. The remake of the second game is a perfect mix between atmospheric horror, suspense and survival. Resident Evil 7 is more of a re <laughs> imagining of the series, possibly taking inspiration from the now cancelled Silent Hills and going back to the scary roots amping it up at the same time. It also made people want to get VR just because it was so scary trying to play the game in VR and it was a complete game not just some demo, which I really appreciate. But whatever you choose to play during this October, I do sincerely hope you'll have a great time doing so. Maybe you get to spend time with some loved ones or maybe you game by yourself. I'm going to spend time with friends, playing scary games and watching classic horror. Sounds great to me. Thank you guys for watching as always and I hope you'll have a fantastic Halloween. And I'll see you guys later. See ya!